Lovely to be with you, sharing and opening God's Word. <coughs> it's those communion biscuits. <clears throat> um, have you got my cash for cans PowerPoint hiding somewhere, Kim? Oh, wonderful lady of computer technology and wizardry. Yes. That works well. <laughs> yeah, so up, up next to the fridge we have a blue bin and um, in there you can put your bottles and your cans and we are collecting them and we're going to turn them into some cash, which is great. So if you wonder what's that blue bin, that's not the rubbish bin, that's the cash for cans bin next to the fridge, just near the kitchen there. We can raise some money and... Uh, Put a few dollars in our pocket to do great things. So that's so. If you wonder what that blue bin is, so save up your bottles and your cans, and we and we will take them and turn them into money, which is always exciting. Um, and things do. Yes, good. All right. Yeah. Next week uh, we have a wonderful slide, but that's quite fine. No drama. Also at the back uh, you'll see our new Nespresso pod machine. We've got a little cafe station there. You can froth your milk. You can turn it on and wait for the two green lights and decide what you want and do all that. So we've made that more accessible for you because um, there's too much congestion in the fridge so you, in the kitchen so you just go and pop your pot in and have a nice coffee and froth your milk and, and yeah, enjoy that if you want to do that. Or you just have normal coffee or whatever you like. Can you do it during the sermon? Oh yes, you can go now if you want to. It's quiet and um, if you feel the need for a coffee, you know, I won't mind. Uh, so that's quite fine. I've seen that before, don't you worry. <laughs> There's like one man in one church, I think, where on his, oh, oh, that's right, he's going to get his coffee. And then he'd come back, and so it's all good. Yes, don't like people leaving halfway through my sermon. I wonder, what on earth did I say? But, but you're here. Also, if you happen to open our container and like to rummage around in our church container, you will notice about oh, 20 or 30 nice white plastic chairs. I have um, yeah, friends of ours at Bunnings where we do sausage sizzles at North Lakes and different things like that. Uh, Tracy gave me a call and they've replaced all their cafe tables and chairs and because she knows I can get rid of stuff and want stuff, uh, we've scored 10 cafe tables and a number of white chairs. Uh, the tables are yet to appear, so I thought, why not? I know a church that can use those. Ours, Christmas, that's right. You won't need to bring your card tables because we'll have 10 nice uh, cafe tables and white chairs. If someone's good with Jeff, um, Jeff and a uh, scratchy green thing, um, I encourage you to, God bless you, you can work your heart out and clean those chairs and get them going. Um, that's right. Whatever, whatever you want. They're not too bad, so just sign I picked them up yesterday afternoon and brought them up here. Uh, there's ten tables now we need to get up here as well. Um, but we can sure... Oh, look! Cash for cans! Amazing! Look at that. How's that peripheral vision? Yeah. Um, so drop your cans and all in the blue bin. There can't be any simpler than that. And we'll have them for you and turn them into money. So that's that's all. Thank you. I knew you could find it. Well done. No yeah. wine bottles. Yes. Uh, well, whatever you like. We, won't, we don't judge. Um, no, you can't cash them in. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Les has got a waving his hand. I see that hand. Put on the can for the 10 cent refund. Yes, yes. 10 cent refund. That's the thing we want. Yes. That's the, that's the thing. Yes. The, the new mop that's in the kitchen was paid for by cans. Oh, the new mop was paid, already paid for by cans. Brilliant. Well done. So thank you for that. So, yeah, so in the container, some chairs, some cafe tables will be arriving in the next couple of weeks because Bunnings replaced all theirs and we're going to throw them at the tip and call me and ask if I can find out. So that's all. Right. Sermon time. Live, life, lead. It's our third week. This morning, let God come and breathe life into your song, into your situation, into your family, into your job, into your health, into your circumstance. Let God breathe some life. Sometimes we feel like we've lost direction and focus. Amen? Many things crowd in and disrupt our life. And we wonder what on earth he's got up to. Up on the screen there, 
for you. The difference between where you are and where God wants you to be depends on having the right people in your life. Who is in your life? Who is there praying for you, supporting you, caring for you? As a church community, who are we gathering around so people live life better and lead life better? This is our last week in our current series and I want to encourage you this morning that we serve a God of restoration. Maybe you feel you've lost your way. God wants us to have our lives back. And there's these powerful words from Romans chapter 5, verse 15 to 17, if you want to get in your Bible or it'll be up on the screen there. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, this morning as we come and just open your word, let us live life. Let us honour our Lord. Let us serve faithfully. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for how you're a God of transformation and a God of restoration. And Lord, we honour you and worship you. Lord, may we hear from you afresh this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Friends, God doesn't want us to have broken and dysfunctional lives. And for many of us, life has been hard and it's been a road of twists and turns and ups and downs and I didn't think I'd be here or I didn't think that would happen or why this? We all need a bit of hope. Hope is a positive expectation for your future. So many of us are stuck looking back and back there is where this thing happened that you need to recover from. But hope gives us a point in the future a point in the future to focus on and to fix our eyes on. And God says to me and you this morning, go for it. He wants to see you restored. He is the manufacturer of hope. Jesus is the giver of hope and life and restoration. It may be confusing. It may be concerning what's going on, but God sees, God hears, God knows. I want to have a little bit of a look at the life of Joseph today. Just one small part. It's towards the end of the story. It's a powerful story. There's so much in the story of Joseph. I could probably go for eight or nine weeks. I might next year. We'll just see. But it's a, it's a powerful story. And maybe you're facing disappointments and hurts today. Let God interpret what's going on for it's his call. There are many opportunities, but at times there's much opposition all around us. If you've got a Bible, it's Genesis chapter 45, 1 to 5 from the New Living Translation. If you know the story of Joseph, this is towards the end of that. Joseph couldn't stand it any longer. There were many people in the room and he said to his attendants, Out all of you! So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him and, it, and the word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realise that Joseph was standing in front of them. Please, 
Come closer, he said to them. So they came closer. And he said it again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery into Egypt. But don't be upset. And don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve many lives. Joseph had a choice. And he says to his brothers, Come, come closer. It's me. I may sound different. I may look different. It's me, your brother Joseph, who you sold as a slave all those years ago. I'm not dead, but alive. Don't be upset. Don't be angry. Don't be concerned for selling me to this place. For it was God who sent me here ahead of you so that lives could be saved. Yes, I look different. I sound different. I'm not dead. It is me. Come, come closer. He calls his brothers to come closer. They wouldn't have recognized him. He would have looked like an Egyptian, sound like an Egyptian, dressed like an Egyptian. In all of the land, if you know the story, there was Pharaoh, then there was Joseph. Their brother, who they cast off for dead. But God sent him there. So what is it all about? You sold me? Or God sent me? What's happening? What does God want to show me? What does God want to show you? The first one is the event, but the second one is the interpretation. The first one is what you did, but the second one is what I decided about what you did to me. It's not the event that determines the direction of your life. It is not the event that determines the outcome of this season. It is your interpretation and how you're going to look at what's happening. But don't interpretations belong to God? I'm not downplaying what you did to me. It's a fact. You pushed me into the pit. You wanted me dead. I didn't like it. It wasn't all right. I was abandoned. I was crushed. I was all alone. But it happened. And there Joseph stands before his brothers. You sold me. But God sent me. All at the same time. You sold me. But God sent me. All at the same time. It's not two separate realities. It's one event, two interpretations. Do you want to live in the reality of the event or the revelation? <clears throat> I used to expect God would answer my prayers. Anyone? jump in and just answer it straight away. Maybe you're the same as me. The more I looked at the story of Joseph, in many situations, God chose not to intervene for Joseph. And God chose not to change the situation at all, if you know the story. I thought God would always change the situation, because I had prayed, and I had believed but sometimes nothing changed. But I still kept on praying. So I prayed more. But the situation didn't change. But guess what happened? Guess what started to change? I started to see what God was doing in me. God needed to do a work in me. And I needed to change my interpretation of the situation. God, show me what's happening. 
God, give me your eyes to see into this situation. Help me to pray with the right heart and the right attitude. And it may not be just a quick fix all the time. Dysfunction, broken relationships, sickness, we could make a list, couldn't we? About all the things we're praying for. We need godly vision to see the situation for what it is. What is God's part to play and what is my part to play? What is your part to play and God's part to play as we live life? As we lead, as we share, as we encourage, as we support. Often at times we react because of our own insecurities. Don't live your life through someone else's Facebook or Instagram post. That's not real life. It's a glimpse or a snapshot. You see a lovely picture of a family and lovely nice children. They're only acting that way because they're taking a photo. And that took 60 shots to get, amen? When they're finished, they'll still be punching and biting each other. It's not real. In our family, in our, in our household, we have a thing called the ultimate selfie. And this appears at Christmas and Easter time. All the fellows get together and Sarah's in charge because she's the skillful one. And we can take a photo and there we are all looking very nice and everything like that. But lately, uh, over the last two years, my daughter Emily, if you have met her, she has a golden retriever called Brinkley. And now he's been included in the ultimate selfie. At Christmas time, I don't know how many photos we took. No, we're not looking right. No, Brinkley, come back here. No, Brinkley, stop. No, his head's not right. No. But if you're fans of ours on Instagram or Facebook or follow my daughters or follow me, you'll see a lovely shot, but you don't know that that took half an hour to take. Because that's not real. It's only a moment. And the frustration of my daughter and all of us. And why does the dog need to be in the photo? But we got there. And it's very nice. Yeah. Photoshop next time. That's right, yes. We'll Photoshop in Pinkley. <laughs> Live life lead. How are you going to interpret what's going on in your life? Make it real. Make it honest. Don't make it fake. God gives us wisdom to interpret our trials and our traumas. Interpret your trials and your traumas. A man walks into a bar and orders a drink. Then he notices that there are pieces of meat nailed to the ceiling of the bar. So he asks the barman, hey mate, what is that all about. The barman replies, if you can jump up and pull down a piece of meat from the ceiling, you get free drinks all night. But if you fail to do so, you'll need to pay the bar $200. Hey mate, do you want to have a go? The man thinks about it for a minute and then he says, no thanks, uh, the stakes are too high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Genesis chapter 45. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. I suffered. I was mistreated. I was in prison. And part of that was God's hand at work. 
because he brought me here ahead of you to save many lives. Up on the screen as we come to a close, our good God has a way of bringing good things even out of wrong terms. Our God has a way of bringing good things even out of wrong terms. How on earth did I get here, God? You must have a plan. You must have a purpose. I didn't like it, but you've restored my life and you've saved me. And I'm taking a step of faith as I do life well. Yes, it hurt. And yes, it was unfair. But I'm holding on to you. Friends, as we come to a close this morning, never be a prisoner of your past. It was just a lesson, not a life sentence. For God is on our side. God is on our side. And we are on your side. And we are here for you. And to stand with you and to lift you up and to care for you. We don't need to do life alone. God bless you. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our final song.